they were fully aware, Your Honor, that my advocates, as you said yesterday, and it is even in your file, in their file, that their advocates were record. But they decided to clandestinely serve me direct by bringing to my official office. I would have expected the standard procedure, since I have counsels on record, to be served through my advocates. That's the expectation. But I was shocked that this, uh, this is it summonses that uh, was served, and I think you must be having a copy, that was served to my office directly, a care of OCS Kilimani police station for the fixing or bearing death for the above matter. They didn't even indicate the case number, as you can see. Uh, they indicated uh, no specification. Hearing of the above matter, they didn't say at 9 a.m. This document I received because your owner, you, you know, it is good to be factual. Most of us who play for the game of politics, I was away. And therefore, when this service was done to me, I just came to learn just the day before coming to the court. That was, uh, in fact, in the morning, because uh, on 16th, that morning before we appeared before you to give us dates. And these people, you know, it's, it, it is judicially aware that most of us, or politicians, are in the village soliciting for votes. So their intention was to serve me, not through my lawyers, serve me clandestinely, throw it under the door of my office in KICC, uh, because maybe I, I was busy in the village campaigning and doing other stuff that relate to politics. Uh, Your Honor, I will not appear. Then a warrant of arrest is issued. Then a narrative is built that people of particular formation do not respect the rule of law. And I tend to believe that the reason... But your honor, I still have a point. It was decided that all such matters within all the courts in the Republic of Kenya need to be concluded within four months. From February, that comes to March, April, and May. And it was on that basis that the Honorable the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya directed all courts in the Republic to ensure that all such matters are concluded. It was on that basis that the accused person was called and told that the matter has to proceed. He was properly summoned and we started, we decided how to proceed. I suggested dates in April and like he has submitted, he indicated that in April, the month of April, he's going to be heavily involved in the primaries. It was at that point that we set the dates, which are for this week, as I have another similar matter of people of other political lining, which is going to proceed next week. And since I could also not conclude all the matters before me within the fixed time, I have also allocated other matters to other courts who are also proceeding within the set time. This date was not fixed in the dark. We took into account the accused person's calendar, including his involvement in the party primary that he indicated he would be busy next month. The hearing of a case is not persecution. And the one thing that the judiciary has been constantly accused of is inordinate delay of matters. This is not a fresh matter, it is for the year 2019. And therefore, as I've indicated, there is nothing special. There is nothing to show that there is any persecution. Hearing of a case is not persecution. He has not been convicted. 
There's nothing to show that even expediting the matter would not be good for the accused person, such that his name will be cleared even as he goes, he marches forward in his political ambitions. And therefore, for the year 2019, the accused person and his defense team have been in possession of all the documents and the matter. As I indicated yesterday, he has four advocates, and out of them he could have got some of them, or at least one of them, to come and represent him. And even as the prosecutor pointed out yesterday, he is a neighbor advocate, as he has ably demonstrated in his lengthy submissions. It's not just any other Kenyan who does not understand the law. He has even mentioned that he has sat on the judiciary, on the committee on judiciary, and therefore he knows his rights very well, and he's also able to conduct his defense well if he's so inclined. I repeat again, there's nothing special about this case. There is nothing political about the case. It is just one of the many such cases in the country that was decided would proceed because the impact on the political climate and the tone in which we should proceed as a country so such that there is peace and the hearing of a case is not a persecution. I therefore direct that we are going to proceed since I was mandated to hear the matter within four months and the accused person was very well aware of the dates and if he needed counsel, he could have made all the arrangements since the date we fixed these particular dates for hearing. I will therefore not adjourn the matter, we are going to go ahead with the hearing. And when the Chief Justice directed, I thought since every Kenyan has come to information, I should be, be given or even a copy so that I, I do not I treat the contents of that circular uh, your own. Because it was never even put as a gazette advert or even provided to media so that people who are accused you could have gotten this information, and that is why, Your Honor, I was insisting earlier on that the way I was served and given these uh, summonses to appear was done in a manner that was not convenient to me. And therefore, Your Honor, on the matter of this CJ case, you know, may I correct one impression subject to your direction? I think uh, Honorable Chirge needs to be very careful about what he says. Your Honor, the summons are here, and I will invite Your Honor to look at the back of the summons. They were duly served on his personal assistant. So he's busy telling falsehoods to this court, and he expects to be heard. He needs to take the court a no, bit more seriously. Honor, the, the council, <coughs> the, she, she broke that word for this one. Deputy Chief Justice, is she is the advocate of high court. She is a long-term practitioner of the law. But that time when she was being, she wanted to be prosecuted, the issue of her profession or whether she has been an advocate or not, or being DCJ, was not considered. She was considered just like any other Kenyan. And the only thing I'm requesting, Your Honor, for justice to be done and to be seen to be done is to kindly give me adequate or a few adjournments. And I've just indicated, Your Honor, that yesterday I, had a, I, I, I would have objected for the prosecution not to adjourn for lack of the witnesses that they'd line up to testify yesterday. But I was gracious enough. I allowed that, them, that leeway to, to, to put in place. And therefore, relying on the case of DCJ, because now that uh, the issue of me being an advocate or not is being brought up, is that she's, she was, she's also a long-term practitioner. She's the administrator in the, and sits in SCAJ. So those are- I told her with that desire to have representation and not just to scuttle the proceedings. I may be wrong on this, 
and the High Court is always there to review or set aside the order by way of appeal. But for now, there will be no adjournment until a point that I'll get a stay of these proceedings from the Superior Court. I again direct that the hearing do proceed. Most of life, Your Honor. Could I Lord. kindly ask you, Honor, that the... uh, there is a charge of incitement to violence contrary to Section 96A of uh, the Penal Court, so that's Chapter 63 of uh, the Laws of Kenya. Your Honor, I uh, to be unconstitutional. Your Honor, uh, we all know that uh, code decisions uh, form part of uh, our jurisprudence. And once a section has been declared by the court to be unconstitutional, to be part of our laws. And uh, under the Criminal Procedure Court, uh, I believe section, section 89, subsection 5, You can reject a charge if you are convinced that it does not disclose an offense. So in this case, if Section 96A has been declared unconstitutional, then the court can reject a charge that has been framed based on that particular section of the law. Uh, you know, there is precedent that uh, a magistrate can uh, invoke uh, that particular section of the law and the strike out a charge. Although you are not bound, I want you to be persuaded by the decision that was made by one of uh, the magistrates. You yeah, know, without unnecessarily interrupting Leonard Senior. They insist to proceed Till by the grace of God, senior counsel appears in court. There are those matters of law. To tell the court is limited. Please, to please, matters please, of please, law. please, please. I please. believe, Your Honor. Uh, sorry. Your Honor, if I have no audience, I will down my tools. I leave the state to conduct these proceedings. I get out of court. Kindly. The rules are clear. I wish to address the court. Your Honor, my line of friend. As I say, if, uh, do I say or I don't say anything? Are you record? I do not say anything. I also respect that. Do I have a right to record? Thank you. I've said, and I want these proceedings to be there. Tomorrow we will get mutated. Uh, I want these proceedings to be I want it to be on record that the prosecution has proceeded with this hearing, I'm told one witness has already proceeded and testified. 
on a charge that the prosecution has been declared unconstitutional is a fraud before the court. And I want that to be on record. That is a fraud before the court. If you know a section has been declared unconstitutional, as a learned counsel, you have no basis to frame charges against an accused person. And I state to your honor that you cannot severe one count against the other. So the discretion that you have, for your honor, is to invoke the provisions of the Civil Procedure Code, Section 89, Subsection 5, and find that there is no offense is disclosed as against the accused person. As I've said, I've submitted before you uh, a decision that has been made by this court before. When a situation like what is facing before you, and I want your honor to look at uh, that charge of ethnic contempt. If you remove... Uh, Sorry, you want to my line, friend? Yes. And comments. Senior counsel, Senator Mugani. For his appearance and submissions and intervention in the matter, the court also appreciates the submissions as regards section 96.2 of the penal code and petition number 430 of 2015, and also the ruling in the Johnston Mudama case, where the charge was struck out under section 89.5 of the CPC. I, however, do not agree that the charge was publicly brought to court. There could be many explanations, either an error, but it cannot be said to be fraud. That preliminary objection is what the defense team ought to have raised when the plea was being taken. Even in the Johnson Mugama case, it was stated that at the earliest time, the counsels should urge the court and draw the court's attention and ask the court to strike out such charges. I point out that this matter is 20, uh, 2019 matter, and that issue had not been raised. And the prosecution has graciously considered and asked the court to withdraw the second count. As it relates to count number two, the court finds that these are two separate charges. And as earlier indicated in my earlier ruling, the proceeding of a case cannot be deemed to be persecution. The outcome of any hearing has various outcomes. A withdrawal, an acquittal, a conviction, or even a court order from the Superior Court. We are the hearing stage. No such objection was raised for over two years. Therefore, do not agree that the two charges cannot proceed. I'm going to allow them to draw count number two for incitement to violence under section 96 of the penal court. But I do not agree that the first count cannot come. That is without any evidence at all. We are going to listen to the evidence. And of course, if the prosecution does not have adequate evidence to prove each and every element of the charge, then of course, some one will collapse. I therefore stand by my earlier ruling. Part of the object of the preliminary objection has succeeded as considered by the state council number two, 
If you are using your own police to try and intimidate you, because you want to perpetuate an agenda that you have been given time for that is, I'm not I was just making a statement that you delivered a ruling just a few minutes ago. I requested for a few minutes to look at it, and your honor, that was only my argument. Why are you ordering a police to follow me around? And yet, this is a court I don't court is where it allowed the, the respect everybody should be had. Yes, in your honor, I think, I, I think your honor, since morning, your honor, since morning, your honor, you have been having a there is a pressure. Because it looks like an argument has been simple since this is an old matter. I thought it doesn't affect whether justice delivered today or yesterday or the day after. And I have indicated that justice should be done and be seen to be done. And therefore, if justice has been done to me, I have indicated that I needed adequate time to prepare. And I've just requested even up to today in the morning, I requested for you even for 20 minutes or an hour to prepare. Because I appreciate the fact that for us to uh, proceed in a seamless manner, we must, uh, the justice should be seen to be done your own. And therefore, the ruling that you have just delivered should be, and my, I need to look at it. Because I would have an issue with that ruling that you just made. Is it, is it, is it an, an your honor? The fact that the issue of status, the position of all is an non issue. All of us are equal before the law. And therefore, your honor, we cannot proceed this way until and unless this ruling that you have been given and you tell a police officer to move away from me because he's infringing on my space, I am not armed. I don't want to attack anybody. I am respecting the rule of law. What I'm fighting for is the principle of natural justice that I should be at. The fact that a police officer is talking to me and you are threatening that I can be thrown out is a clear indication that this is political persecution. Because the, the, why, why is a police officer here and me? And you are saying you are restraining yourself. I think this is not the judiciary we wanted. We wanted a judiciary that works for all Sorry, Kenyans, you, you know, regardless I, I for think, for regardless person. your honor, regardless for the status that we have. Under the same now, if you are using a courtroom to use police to intimidate us, the then the judiciary should have been the last the line of defense, your honor. Kindly and therefore, your honor, I am requesting that since there is a ruling that has been delivered, and this ruling has raised critical issues. And you have said I can get the counsel. I don't know where you get that attitude or comment that I can get a you counsel know. from. You know that I don't know where you okay. get it. But my own opinion is you are misguided because you cannot say it seems since my status I can get any counsel I want. These counsels that you are talking about, I don't know where they come from. I wish they knew where they come from, Your Honor. So Your Honor, what I am requesting is that an adjournment yesterday the prosecution adjourned. Yeah, I didn't hear. I didn't hear you directing them that they must proceed. I thought it was also in my interest that they proceeded yesterday. You have put it right that this matter came two years ago, Your Honor. I didn't hear you yesterday, unless you know justice must be seen to be done and be done. You, yesterday, the prosecution withdrew two witnesses. Two, two witnesses. No, it's not, I'm not talking about political rally. You can see you are making understanding attitude statements. And I hope it is in record because it's not a political rally. By saying yesterday, prosecution decided not to bring two witnesses. It's a political rally. Unless political rally has changed meaning. No, your honor, yesterday I'm making a very critical point that you made yesterday. Yesterday, senior counsel was to bring. For five minutes, and that the police officers will escort the. No, let me finish. If there is no problem, they will escort me.
help them in ensuring that they are being persecuted. And your honor, the police even are not supposed to be directed by you, they are supposed to be directed by the IG. So your honor, I respectfully say that the enmity that you have shown me since morning and since yesterday when this matter came up is very unfair because it likes the, you are pushing the political persecution, your yeah, honor, and yeah, therefore, yeah, your honor. Yeah, yeah, but I thought you would respect this. Wait, I'm not no, no, I'm not. I'm not this, uh, why would they block me at the door? Because I thought this is a public space. I thought this is not a private property. This is a public place. No, and if they are pushing me, if your honor, if they are pushing me, if they are pushing me at the door with the status that you, you say I have, what will happen to ordinary Kenyans who want to access the courts of law? And, your, and your, your Honor, I will not allow you, when I'm speaking, you have ensured that the police... Your, your Honor, I will not allow when you, you have just... It has to be the court also. Your Honor, the accused person is of the considered view, according to him, that this court cannot impartially hear this dispute because it has made certain utterances, according to him, and certain moves, including sending him out of court, which he considers to be evidence that the court is not partial towards him, impartial towards him. The owner has also instructed me that his attempts at getting an advocate have become uh, futile and he is also of the view that this court is determined to either convict him or misunderstand him. He therefore wishes that this dispute be presented before another judicial officer so that uh, the course of justice can be served that you uh, disqualify, recuse yourself from hearing it and refer the matter to another judicial officer. That's all from my side. Constitution is talking about right to representation. It is a sacrosanct right. This morning, again, we were before you on a different matter. When in the presence of court, the said accused person requested for 10 minutes so that he can organize himself, organize his thoughts, and perhaps find alternative representation. You know, the happenings at that time were as follows. The advocate who was representing our client had just recused himself. And the point is, recused he had not been fired by our client. And therefore, at that point, our client was flat-footed. Our client, therefore, should not suffer the prejudice of being abandoned in the middle of the sea by the captain. It's therefore imperative that he be given a chance to appoint advocates to represent him. And now that he has done so, which is fairly reasonable, we need time also to look at the documents. However, having been subjected to what has happened in the morning, our client is indeed not comfortable to proceed before this court. And it is not a statement of bad faith or an indiction, indictment against this court, but rather a fear, a fear, which, be it real or imagined, it is a fear. To our client, it is real. To this court, it may seem imagined. But when there is a fear of bias, then this court is enjoined to present the same case to a different bench for purposes of its determination in a process that is not just fair, but seen to be fair. I wish to reiterate what my colleague 
Kubasu has noted. And indeed, I'd wish to reveal to God that at that point, we were short of making an application to address court as friends of court because we could see there's an anomaly in the process in which our new client was being subjected to open hostility, being denied a chance to instruct advocates and being given facilities to, process, uh, to defend himself. In any case, the prejudice will be suffered by our client, not the prosecution. It is on record that this matter was adjourned yesterday on Monday on the account of the prosecution. Nothing would be easier than giving our client 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. And that is one instance of open and uncompromisable bias against you. Therefore, wish to make the said application that you recuse yourself in this matter and be presented before a different bench so that justice can be done and also seen to be done. You much of light. Bad faith and is lacking in substance, both in law and fact. Your Honor, the Constitution Article 50 sub Article 2 F clearly speaks to the conduct of an accused person before a court of law. And much as the accused seeks to benefit from the provisions of Article 50 as to fair trial, he has a reciprocal duty under the Constitution to ensure that he conducts himself in a manner that does not amount to disruption of court business and would allow proceedings to be carried on in an orderly version. You know, the entry of my two lion friends now confirms two things. Number one, this court has been more than consistent and correct in its observation that this accused person has the capacity to hire counsel of his own choice as and when he so desires. He has previously been represented by the three counsel. And other than yesterday, when there was reference to one of them being before Judge Sergon, there has been studied silence on his part as to what became of the other two counsel. So the presumption is that those two counsel who knew of the dates are still engaged by him. They have not formally withdrawn, but have chosen not to attend court. Since the commencement of these proceedings to today morning, the accused person has brought forth at least three counsel, and now my two learned friends. His consistent theme has been adjournment, adjournment to prepare. But that is not the only tangent he has taken. Preparation has actually assumed a back seat in the course of his submissions, and he has sought to emphasize that he is on a political persecution. You know, listening to my learned friends, and I am glad to them they have been magnanimous enough to indicate to you that they stood in silence right behind Senior Counsel Mungeni earlier on when he was prosecuting that application. Only for them to jump in immediately after he leaves. 
under the guise of recent instruction. Your Honor, if you are to allow the application to recuse yourself, two things will be achieved through mischief by the accused person. Number one, he will have gotten an adjournment through the back door. And number two, he will be succeeding in painting this court in the negative light that, Your Honor, this court is not in control of its own proceedings and is not interested in doing justice. It is not correct, as my line friend Mr. Akula, Akusala has submitted, that the matter was adjourned on Monday by the prosecution. Indeed, the matter came up yesterday. We took one witness, advanced our reasons, and the court gave a reasoned ruling as to why the matter would proceed today. We have demonstrated beyond peradventure our commitment to proceed with the matter. Your Honor, let me submit that uh, the right to counsel is not by itself absolute, but may be limited in appropriate cases. I'll place reliance on the case of Thomas Aluga Ndegua versus Republic 2016 EKLR. A court of appeal decision, the Chief Justice today was presiding then, and in that bench was Judge Azangalala and Jan Mohammed of the Court of Appeal. The court did observe that in appropriate cases where it appears to the court that this right to representation is being abused, then the court must reject any attempt to delay a trial on account of that delay. And the sleep protected by the courts is not an absolute right and is subject to reasonable limitations. What is the point I'm making your that Mr. Basu and Mr. Kusala they've given one main reason that the, the court has exhibited hostility and or bias against the accused person. And that can be garnered from this court's refusal to grant an adjournment to the accused person. The only thing that did about 10 minutes after senior counsel, Senator Omogeni, withdrew from representing the accused person. That is your representation is not new. We had that argument yesterday and the court delivered a considered ruling on it. And luckily, today's and yesterday's proceedings are not only live recordings and in open court, the press is also here. Everybody as the accused person had become unruly. As for the issue that I'm either hostile or biased against the accused person, I repeat again, I have nothing personal against him. I do not know him. I have never encountered him. We've never transacted. I am not in any political leaning. I have not received any instructions from anywhere. And I'm sufficiently trained to know how to conduct proceedings and how not to 
exhibit bias. The court will, have, however, not tolerate what I termed as drama. It is now get past 1 p.m. And this issue of an adjournment started at 10, around 10.30 a.m. And it is the same drama which was there yesterday. As I repeated yesterday, my only interest is having the matter prosecuted successfully. This is to save the judiciary the constant embarrassment of being considered the weakest link in the criminal justice system. And we all know the judiciary has constantly been accused of being slow and delaying justice. Like I said, the proceedings are live and everyone can see the drama that comes. And this is not coming from any other person but the lawmakers. I will therefore not recuse myself. I am not hostile to the accused person. I have no personal interest in the matter. And I find the application for recusal, it is just another way to seek an adjournment through the back door. As Mr. Muteti has pointed out, the accused person is able to get counsel when it fits him to file an application which is going to delay the matter like happened when senior counsel Omogeni came to file the application to have the charges struck out, after which he quickly withdrew. If I were biased, I would even have refused to have count number one withdrawn, as the counsel had said. I repeat, conducting a hearing is not persecution. It is that simply a hearing and the results can even be positive, even to the accused person. And like I said in my earlier ruling, it will free him to go and co co pursue his political pursuits. I therefore am not going to recuse myself. I note this is at that time we are now reconvening. And owing to the conduct of the accused person, the court proceedings were interrupted and I was unable to proceed. I'm even going to go further and direct the Inspector General or the DCI to get copies of the proceedings, investigate today's proceedings, and see whether the conduct of the accused person inhibited the proceedings, and whether there are any offenses which were committed, either creating disturbance or obstruction of justice, and appropriate charges be preferred. I therefore disallow the application and stand firm that the hearing will proceed as scheduled.